A reading from Isaiah. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold them. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I am formed and made. Word of God, Word of Life. Be to God. A reading from Acts. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ. Sometimes you just need to hear a word of reassurance. When no matter how hard you seem to try at something and it doesn't seem to be working. When physically you're feeling just a bit off and wondering when will relief come. When it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year. When things are tough and the walls seem to be closing in around us, it's amazing how much a few words of reassurance or a comforting presence can do for our well-being. When I was in college, my first long-term girlfriend broke up with me. And as you might imagine, with the first loss of love, I was shook. Fortunately, I had friends to turn to when I needed reassurance. And by friends, I mean specifically the TV show, Friends. (laughs) I'm not proud. I don't even know why I'm telling you this, but I watched the entire series in one semester as I was grieving our breakup. My real friends gave me quite a bit of grief for that. Now, friends may not be your go-to for reassurance, but it certainly provided me some, (laughs) some comfort in my time of need. The words of Isaiah from our Old Testament reading for the day was spoken to the ancient Jewish people when they were experiencing a slightly more pressing need. These Jewish people had been, they were nearing the end of approximately 50 years of exile and captivity in Babylon. Their future was uncertain. Their temple had been destroyed. Their land had been pillaged. They're not sure what's left to go home to. They're not even sure if they can consider this land home anymore. It's been an entire generation since any of them had been there. And the overarching narrative that they were being told was that this time of exile was punishment from God for their disobedience. 
They had turned away from God. Worshipped other gods, they'd ignored the prophet's repeated warnings to stop the continued social injustices. And in response, God had noticed the people's corruption and had allowed the Babylonians to take them into exile as punishment. If you want to hear those prophets' warnings or some other condemning language, feel free to read through most of the rest of the book of Isaiah. Today, though, we come to a later part, and we hear God speaking a different message to his people. Do not be afraid. I am with you. Thus says the God who has seemed for the past 50 years to be distant. And even when God was present, the people haven't really been sure they've wanted to be near this God, a God who's justly punished them. I have now called your name. You are mine, God now says to the people who felt forgotten and neglected. Through these words of the prophet Isaiah, God is calling to his people, reminding them who they are and whose they are, reminding them of the covenant that they had forsaken, but offering it anew to them again. How often do we find ourselves feeling similarly to the Jewish people? Maybe not on the scale of a whole nation, but on a more individual level, isolated, forsaken, forgotten. Where were you, God, when I was going through that horrible teenage breakup? Where were you, God, when my cancer came back? Where were you, God, when I called and prayed and cried and I heard nothing from you? The waters of the hurricane's torrential downpour swell up around us. The sweltering wildfires that consume burn ever closer, and in response, sometimes all we're able to do is cry out to God with a, Where are you? And in a beautiful love poem from Isaiah, God responds to us with, You are precious and honored in my sight. I love you. Well, that's a great sentiment, God, but how do I know you mean what you say? God doesn't leave that question unanswered either. The response comes from our gospel reading for the day. Jesus has gone down to the Jordan River where John was baptizing people and announcing that one more powerful than he was coming. And then in a reversal of what might have been expected, Jesus then gets baptized by John, not the other way around. Jesus, God in the flesh, came into our midst and was baptized like any other person, being born anew. And after that, a voice from heaven speaks to Jesus and uses the same language that God did hundreds of years before. You are my beloved. You are precious to me. I am pleased with you. Jesus receives the blessing of God's favor at his baptism and sets out to begin his ministry. But even though God has spoken to Jesus, claiming him as his own, naming him beloved, promising to be with him, this doesn't exempt Jesus from pain and suffering. Jesus still must walk through the fires and pass through the rivers. Immediately after leaving his baptism, Jesus is transported into the wilderness to be tempted. Later on, Jesus is betrayed by his friends. He's left alone to pray while his disciples fall asleep. He's hung on a cross to die. God's promise of togetherness, God's promise of belovedness, these don't offer mystical protection to Jesus as he went through his life on earth. And they don't, and God doesn't offer that to us either. But by making the promise to the people of Isaiah's time, by making this promise to Jesus, God gives us the answer to the question of where are you? 
when we tell God whatever it is we're going through, God can look at us and say, I know, unlike anyone else, what it is you're going through. And I am in your pain with you. By sending Jesus on Christmas, naming him beloved at his baptism, and allowing him to die on a cross, God took on everything, including the worst pain, of what it means to be human. God came so that when the teenager who's suffering his first heartache turns to God, God knows what that suffering is like. And then God really found out what suffering was like as he watched every episode of Friends with my roommates and other friends. (laughs) God came so God knows what the ripping apart of friendships feels like after a move across the country or a return to the homeland after years in exile. And God suffers in that loss of relationship with us. God came so he knows and can share in our pain. And that is where God is when we hurt most deeply. I was recently at a hospital sharing a prayer with a family whose loved one was about to be removed from life support. As I opened my pastoral care book, which so often has the words when I don't, the first reading I came across was today's text from Isaiah. As God spoke to the ancient Jewish people, calling them home, naming them precious in his sight. So God was calling this man home, naming him precious in his sight. As I read it, I knew the words themselves can't and won't take away the pain we feel at death, at any loss or grief. But in hearing them, Do not be afraid, I am with you. In hearing them, they empower us to keep going, knowing whose we are. We belong to a God whose own Son, Jesus, the Beloved with whom God was well pleased. He died so he might know our pain and share in our suffering. And then this Beloved Son also rose so that his pain, our pain, is never the end. Jesus rose so that we might all be called home, named beloved, and told we are precious in God's sight. Amen.